Well, there are actually two affirmative action cases that might make it to the Supreme Court, and the one that Tommy thought might make it, I think is actually somewhat less likely to make it up there just because it's not all that interesting. Um, it is the UT case, and now you may recall that the Supreme Court in the last hurrah of Justice O'Connor upheld a, um, an affirmative action program for the University of Michigan that said that it was appropriate to take race into account um, if you do it in a way that is personal and not a quota and y you do a lot of other stuff so that actually no court can figure out what the heck you're doing, um, which is actually sort of the standard. If you make it so d diffuse and so vague and so, you know, so individualized that nobody has a smoking gun that race was actually the actual factor, um, then you can do it. And, you know, people in universities shockingly are able to, to do these things. Um, and so I don't think that as long as that is, you know, the rule, you know, the Supreme Court is going to be interested in coming back to that issue so soon. Now, what makes the UT case somewhat more interesting is that, that it, in the interregnum, while affirmative action had been thrown out by the Fifth Circuit in the Hopwood case in the, in the 90s, the Texas legislature, I think at the behest of a late Republican um, who is, I'm sure, very close uh, to, to everybody here, uh, passed a statute that said that in order to increase the number of minority students in Texas public education, there was going to be a guaranteed 10% um, for uh, the, top, uh, the top 10 at each high school would be entitled to go into one of the universities in the UT system. And so the question that becomes somewhat more interesting in this case is whether um, you can, um, in effect, double dip, whether you can have a, a statue that gives you an oomph on the diversity that you're looking for by virtue of the 10% rule, but still have some level of deference to the university if it deems that that's not enough and wants to also do one of the types of affirmative action programs um, that um, were upheld in 2003 in the Grutter case. Um, I will say that the, uh, the UT program was upheld in a very thorough opinion by Judge Higginbotham in the Fifth Circuit. There was not a dissent, Judge Garza wrote a special concurrence um, saying that he went along with it but thought that you know, the Supreme Court was out of its mind. Um, and uh, if you basically have a panel of the Fifth Circuit of all places telling you that this is okay based on existing precedent and the best that the person who takes a different view can say is that the Supreme Court should have ruled this case, um, doesn't really sound like a, like a gilded invitation to the Supreme Court to actually get involved. Now, the other case that I, I'll just mention quickly is a lot more interesting, and it is coming out of the Sixth Circuit if it gets out, um, and it has to do with the Michigan side of the story. After the plans were upheld in the Supreme Court, there was a popular referendum that essentially outlawed uh, affirmative action in public education in the state of Michigan. Um, and as a result of that, you know, the, the, uh, the one school that went to the Supreme Court can't do it anymore. Um, the Sixth Circuit and a two-to-one panel uh, threw that out as a violation of equal protection based on the theory of a couple of cases, Hunter and, um, and another case involving, you know, the. Seattle School District, that says that it is unconstitutional and a violation of equal protection to place political impediments to minorities in the attainment of certain um, 